I don't know why I'm freaking out. <laughs> hey mamas, so welcome back to A Mama's Guide. My name is Queen Sidem and if you're new here, I do these motherly insightful videos. I'm not a professional, so please always consult your doctor. These are just some tips and tricks that worked for me in my own journey through motherhood. I completely lost my supply. So today we're going to talk about how to increase your milk supply. As long as your baby is fed, this is great. If you find yourself not being able to breastfeed, whether it's a medical condition, this is okay. It is okay if you cannot breastfeed. As long as your baby is fed, mommy's healthy, baby's healthy, that's what matters. But this video in particular is in regards to breastfeeding. I completely lost my supply. Like, I'm gonna insert a photo. It was gone. There was, okay, there was maybe like a milliliter of milk I had no milk and this is after I was breastfeeding successfully it was just like in a blink of an eye milk was gone so my baby was born prematurely he stayed in the NICU for about a month and a half um, I still get emotional over that but a lot of NICU moms are successful in breastfeeding I was not um, I don't think it's an exact correlation to being in the NICU but it did make it more difficult for me to just breastfeed on demand. So the first way to increase your milk supply is to breastfeed directly. And it's okay if you can't, we'll talk about that later, but for now we're just gonna go through these steps. So if any of these steps is just too difficult for you, we might talk about an alternative later, so stay tuned. Do not fret, okay? So, the first way to increase your supply is for your nipple and your brain, those nerves, create both these pathworks and they're talking they're networking so when your baby nurses from your breast directly it's sending these communicators like hey mama baby's hungry it's timing it baby fed for 15 minutes so at 8 o'clock tomorrow your baby's gonna be hungry at this time in 15 minutes so that feeling of your baby nursing on your breast is telling your brain like and your body the schedule of milk that's required. Pumping can also um, stimulate a baby's mouth and nursing, but the number one way is for your the nerves in your nipple and your breast to feel the true baby's mouth nursing from it. Nonetheless, it can take a toll on you if you are having trouble breastfeeding because you feel like it's supposed to come naturally. But thankfully in the NICU, I had a lactation consultant every week um, they even had the text-free app so I can text her when I was home and I just they the team there the lactation team really helped me get my breast milk back so you want to breastfeed every two to three hours your baby's gonna be hungry probably every two hours a lot of babies cluster feed so that means they're just hungry every hour or around that time just excessively hungry it just might mean that they're tired and they're exhausted from sucking to get the food so they fall asleep, but they didn't get their full meal, so they wake up again to finish. So if your baby's eating like every one hour, you don't wanna start training them yet, especially if they're newborn. You don't wanna start training them to finish their full meal, put them to sleep, I'm not gonna feed you until two hours comes. You don't wanna do that yet because your baby could still be hungry. It's not that they're playing with their food yet and playing these tricks on you. It's hard to suck for food when you were just in the stomach, getting the food straight from the placenta. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. They're learning something new. You have to give them grace. You have to be patient. Um, but let's keep it real. I just said they're gonna be eating like every two hours, let's say the standard, not cluster feeding. Standard, every two to three hours. This means you might not sleep for eight hours in the night if you're exclusively nursing from your breast. Here comes the part that everybody's waiting for. Does it hurt? So a lot of people believe that breastfeeding should hurt. It's just known generation to generation. Breastfeeding hurts, pumping hurts. It's your rite of passage. through Breastfeeding should not be extremely painful. It should be sore after, but if it hurts during, you wanna see a lactation consultant, talk to other mothers, YouTube, ways to latch because it should not be that painful to the point where you cannot get through a feed. Sometimes you can change your position. You can do a football hold. This is the baby's head like you're holding the football. 
and they're like this. Maybe that works better for the baby and they can get a better grasp. You can do the standard hold like this. There's so many different positions and ways to breastfeed. So try changing the baby's position. You also can fix your baby's mouth. Your mommy, you know when something's up, you can try to mess around. Okay, so sometimes when you're, I'm holding the baby, I pull his lip down to make sure he's fully grasping the areola and not just the nipple because that's where the pain typically comes in. Are your breasts engorged? That means swollen and it feels like rocks are in them. Milk could be hardening because it wasn't expressed. Express means let out. So maybe it's painful because enough milk is not being let out as often as it should be, so it's hardening. When your milk starts to harden, it's because your breasts aren't stimulated. So remember we talked about that communication with your nerves to your body and your brain. If they're realizing, oh, nobody's sucking every two hours anymore, let's decrease the milk because we don't feel that sensation every two hours. So that's when it starts to harden, like let's say you go out for drinks, you pump the bottle, you gotta wait till the liquor is out of your system, now it's like five hours. Your breasts are like, oh, we went five hours without pumping. Let's we'll move on to pumping, because a lot of moms do not exclusively nurse from their breasts, but let's stay in this category while we're here. So the moments that you're breastfeeding directly from your breast, or even if you pump, you wanna do skin-to-skin -skin contact. Research also supports that when your baby's feeling the warmth of your body, connected to you physically. This stimulates your body to make more milk. So after you breastfeed, you wanna put the baby directly on your bare chest. It's called kangaroo care, skin to skin. You might see like dads with the baby wrapped around them, chest to chest. Dads can do it too. Moms do this often. When you wanna increase your milk supply, it's believed that this also helps. All right, so let's get on to pumping. You should be, if you're doing exclusively pumping, I'm just gonna separate it so it's better, it's easier to understand. So if you're exclusively pumping, that means the baby is not nursing from your breast. You're only pumping into bottles. You wanna pump about eight times a day. You're gonna pump during sleep time. I know, I know, I know, sorry. But you have to create that same stimulation that a real baby would with the pump because you wanna make sure you do not lose your milk supply if this is your goal to breastfeed for a long period of time. Your baby might eat every eight to 16 times a day. So just about every two hours, your baby is hungry. Most babies are not getting their full feed that one time they breastfed you. So you don't wanna think, oh, he's not hungry, he just ate two hours ago. It's hard. He ate what he could, he had to calm his body down because it was working out and now he's ready to finish that same first meal. So you just want to be patient with your baby and if you're pumping, you want to definitely try to pump a lot throughout the day, minimum eight times. The pump matters. Your insurance can cover a pump at the hospital, but if you realize that your milk supply is dropping or decreasing significantly, you want to invest in a better pump with better flanges. So flanges are the suction parts, what sucks. There's different sizes. Some people say that pumping is extremely painful. You might have the wrong size flange. Do not go through torture. Try again and again and again until you find a way to make breastfeeding more comfortable. It will be sore after the feed, especially if you're feeding like this. There's a lot of cream for it. You could soak it in a, um, a bowl of hot water or a big pot of hot water, just rest your breast in them. There's a lot of ways you can smooth your breast, but during the pumping it sh or nursing, it should not be extremely painful, just a bit uncomfortable. You wanna pump for about 15 minutes, that's like the standard pumping, and you wanna do each breast. Something that made pumping easier was getting the pumping bra. So like Kourtney Kardashian had the Medilla breast pump, but she had the bra, she was hands-free, she took a selfie, so a lot of people started getting that bra. There's different types. I had the bralette type, so that, like it just lifted up so much stress off of me because like pumping became such a like, oh, I can't do anything. So when I got the pumping bra, I was like, two pumps at the same time, I was eating some popcorn. So when you get your pump, 
If your milk supply is low, I'm assuming that the moms watching this video have a drop in their supply, but it's okay if it's not. So assuming your supply is low, you want to invest in a pump. I like the Medela, Medela pump. Um, there's different types. I got the one that was close to $400. <sighs> Changed my life. So it comes with a timer and an app. So I just press the button, start the pump, have a timer. The app will time like you pumped at this time. I'm going to set an alarm and a timer to pump in two hours after. That way I never forgot to pump. This is something that no one talks about. When you breastfeed, first there's a letdown phase. So your baby is sucking fast just to get that letdown and then it will slow because now the milk is pouring out. Your pump is supposed to mimic a baby. Your pump should have a letdown button. Check your manual. Check your manual. So check the manual and see what is the letdown button. Before you pump a full bottle, press letdown first. When letdown is over, I, like a few minutes, when letdown is over, then you put the suction. The suction is going increase the suction but everything is in moderation only as your body feels comfortable so you start at let down start at moderate when it starts to feel comfortable like it's not a um, tugging intense tugging you can increase the suction more low supply regular supply extremely fruitful supply you always do let down first because this is what a baby would actually do also i almost forgot so when you're breastfeeding one breast you want to pump the other so that way both breasts are making milk in your body. You're tricking your body and letting them know, I got twins. You need to up it. You need to up the milk supply. I got twins. So then you switch. The next feed, you nurse on this breast, pump this breast. You want to keep it even and keep the milk supply going and keep stimulating the nerves there. So your body can say, oh, this baby is starving. We got to give her milk after milk after milk. Child, let's say you tried everything in the book. Pumping, cookies, nursing, you cut out pacifiers, you cut out all the nipple confusion things. There's something called power pump. Power pump should only be done once a day. It's okay to do it twice a day. I, when I did it twice a day, when my milk was completely, like I could not feed my baby breast milk because I only got this much each time. And I had to do formula because my baby needs to be fed. I did power pump is pretty intense. My breast would be extremely sore from power pump, but I really wanted him to have my milk just because he kept getting, not that your baby would get this, okay? My baby had extenuating circumstances where he was just sick week after week, day after day, it was something new. So when he had trouble with his digestive tract from the formula, he was diagnosed with a disease that's typically fatal and he had to go a while without eating anything, without having formula, without having breast milk, without having nothing because the intensity of the disease they wanted to clean. He was fed through IVs. And this is just fats and liquids and he was crying all the time and passing out it was just really scary this is not common at all the percentage is so small but just to say how bad i wanted to breastfeed my son because he was premature and because his stomach couldn't handle the outside substances a lot of preemies can take formula my son specifically too many crises for him to stick with the formula. So he was doing formula because he needs to eat after he went through the phase with the IVs. But I really was like, I need to get my milk back. So power pump was very intense. But if you really wanna get your milk back, I definitely recommend it. But it replaces a feed. So I'm not saying feed eight times a day and then do a power pump. Let the power pump replace a nursing appointment. So girl, how you do it? I know I gave you a story like, cut to the point, okay, okay, okay. You pump for 20 minutes, do your letdown first, pump for 20 minutes. Throughout that 20 minutes, you wanna increase the suction as normal. Rest for 10 minutes. Now when I did the power pump, just because I had no milk, 
I did both breasts at the same time. Girl, I know. Rest for 10 minutes. I had a timer, power pump again, but this time it's not gonna be 20 minutes, it's just gonna be 10. So your rest is always gonna be 10. Pump 20 minutes, rest 10 minutes. Pump 10 minutes, rest 10 minutes. Pump 10 minutes. You're good. You don't have to keep the exact same times. These are the times that are standard for power pump. And this is the time that my lactation consultant told me to do. So I did it at night because it's just they just say like you have the most milk at night because you fall asleep, you forget to pump, a lot of stuff happens at night and you have the most milk. This worked. Even when there was nothing coming out, I continued with the time, the allotted time. And eventually I was just leaking milk like through my shirts, walking down the street, leaking milk like it was so much milk after doing this for a while. So we've talked about nursing directly, we've talked about pumping, we've talked about latching a little bit. Now we're going to talk about external items for mama, not for the baby. So I did mother's milk, it's um, a tea, lactation tea. When I used this, I did also see, I don't know which specific one thing did it for me because I tried a lot of things. But I definitely saw an increase when I was using the mother's milk tea. I did notice my son would projectile vomit sometimes. But like I said, my stomach, my son's stomach was very sensitive. It's very different from your standards, baby. So I definitely purchased the mother's milk tea. It, I don't like tea, but that tea was not that bad for me. I did add sugar. I did what I gotta do. Um, so I definitely recommend that. There's also um, a West Indian tip that I had from my great from my grandmother. Um, is barley water or barley milk. So you have the barley beans and you boil it on the top on a pot, and you have it in a strainer and you strain all the liquid that comes from barley, and that's believed to produce more milk. So I did that. He could have been throwing up from. He's not eating this. He's not having the tea. He's not having the barley. But I noticed when I started doing external items to stimulate my milk growth, that's when I saw like projectile vomit in him. During this time, I also was doing half bottle, because at this time I got half bottle now. So I still wasn't getting a full bottle of milk for him, just half of what he would eat. So, and mind you, these are the small bottles, because he's like only a few months old. These are not even the big one-year-old bottles. So small bottles, I still was only filling half. During this time, I was mixing half breast milk, half formula. I was weaning him off of formula, so I mixed it. He could have been projectile vomiting from the mixture, but my doctor represent my doctor recommended using as much breast milk as I can just because of his stomach issues. So I still put the breast milk in it, and I put a little bit of formula. There's also many lactation cookies. You can purchase them already made. Or you can make them yourself. There's a lot of recipes with just natural herbs and ingredients that are known to produce um, milk. Water, water, water. So a lot of people are gonna tell you drink water, you have to drink lots of water. When you breastfeed, drink water. When you're sleeping, drink water. When you're thinking, drink water. We, I talked a little bit about nipple confusion. So sometimes, some babies, it's rare, it's not really common anymore. But some babies do have problems latching on to your breasts if they're used to a pacifier or a specific bottle type nipple. So I use the Aveeno. That's almost identical to a breast nipple. It has wrinkles around, it gets smooth, it's a little bumpy, kind of like my breast. That worked perfectly, he had no problem latching. But I also did not use pacifier. So he, there was no nipple confusion there. In the NICU, they put pacifiers just because they have a lot of babies at a time and they want to soothe one while they run to the other. But after that, like it was either my breast or that one bottle, no pacifier at home. If you tried everything and the baby just won't latch, try not using artificial nipples. Use your actual nipple. You also don't want to overstress. Now here's... Now here's things that you could be doing that could be affecting your supply negatively. Smoking, there's a correlation between smoking and milk supply. Typically it goes down when you smoke. There's also a correlation between smoking and asthma, so they don't recommend you to do hookah, smoking cigarettes, smoking weed. 
because it's believed to give the baby, possibly give the baby asthma and a low milk supply is very likely. Drinking alcohol. So I have a video on how to safely drink and breastfeed, but you have to know that drinking does lower your supply. So which is why I always made sure to pump. Even when I was drunk, I'd pump and I discard the milk because I never want to get it confused with fresh milk. I had to pump on a strict schedule. I could not mince a pump because my milk drool dried up so fast. So you just have to find your balance and try your best. Low stress. If social media is stressing you out, don't check it. Your partner stressing you out, tell people you don't want to be updated on them. Bills stressing you out, seek help from your family. Ask your job if you can work from home. Eventually, when I was able to make enough milk for a full bottle, I was like, oh my god, I fed him a full bottle. And he he was full like i was like i called my lactation consultants they were like you got your supply back after this much months without getting any milk and i'm like yes i do so after he got his supply back i was like it ain't over i switched to the how to how to build enough for a milk supply so once I got the storage back, once I got the breast milk flowing, I was able to move on to this. I wanted to fill up my fridge with milk, okay? I wanted to go out. Yeah, I got milk in the fridge. Give me that milk. I wanted to do things spontaneously. Oh, I'm about to go out. There's a bottle in the fridge for you. You got him, you know? Like, I wanted to have a milk supply in case of emergency. I breastfed anywhere and everywhere, okay? You got to keep the stress low because stress can decrease your supply. So stress, smoking, drinking, stress, smoking, drinking, those can decrease your supply. I know you came to this video because you've tried everything, but I do hope that there was at least one new thing for you to try, one new thing for you to implement, because I know how important it is, especially like when you just have your mind set on breastfeeding, and I know how heartbreaking it could be to not be able to breastfeed. So I was able to breastfeed until month seven. And mind you, the first few months I did not breastfeed. I wasn't able to. And when I noticed like my son wanted to eat like every 30 minutes, I was like, yeah, cause he's not getting a full feed. I'm not making enough milk. Then I tried, um, I measured it by pumping into the bottle. And I was like, what? This is all I'm giving him after 20 minutes of pumping. I lived by myself, but my mom would come over and sleep over some nights, or I'd go over there and stay. There's different sacrifices I made to make sure that he was eating throughout the night. Because I had a cluster feeding baby, so my baby ate every hour. Okay? Every hour, I was nursing. It was crazy. And you're gonna get a lot of feedback and pushback, like, I've even been to the airport and I was, um, they had to stick something in my formula and I was like, why are you doing that? I read online that you don't have to do that anymore if it's sealed. And they said, no, we're still doing it. And then somebody on the line was like, back in my day, people just breastfeed from their breasts. And I was just like, and it was a man. And I was like, if you're really low, like, this much milk comes out you want to keep pumping every two hours try to do it eight hours a day at nap time try to sleep for four hours or five wake up pump both breasts go back to sleep to get your other three hours in just little tiny things make a difference thank you for tuning in be sure to check out my older videos and drop a comment and let me know what you'd like to see next i love you guys and all the best i wish you Good, good luck. I will keep you all in my prayers. I pray that your milk supply comes back. Your milk supply is fruitful and healthy. And you do what's best for your baby. If you do have to include formula, I did formula for months. I did formula for a minute, maybe two months I did formula. It's okay. You just gotta give yourself grace, give your baby grace, and do what works for you. You know what's best. A happy mom, a happy baby.